All right, welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll be fixing the ear as well as looking at how to create additional drawings inside of our character. Um, so let's start right away with this one over here. Um, when we create fixes for a 360 or for a rotating rig such as this one, we want to make sure that the fix that we do, if it's for a specific view, that it doesn't go and break what we have on the other ones as well. So right now our front view works all right, our quarter front view works as well. So we want to add this system so that it works on the side view as best as possible without ruining anything else. So let's go and find our ear that we have over here inside the head group and we are going to create a new drawing next to it. And we're gonna do something a little bit similar to something that we've seen inside of the Rigging 2 tutorial. I don't know if you guys have seen it before. Um, we were creating a line that was getting invert cut inside of the pants and at the same time having an area where the cutter would cut away a part of the pant leg as well. So we're gonna do something a little bit similar over here. We'll have the line for the outside ear and this is the front ear so I'll make sure to indicate that add and close we'll create it for the front ear right now uh, doesn't mean that the uh, ear that is in the back will require the same thing so let's create that um, I think for now I'll just attach it to this part here just to kind of make sure that it follows the exact same peg and I'll connect it at the top just so we can have a visual when we actually go and draw something. All right so if we look at the part that we have inside of the design let's create a, a new peg just to offset it without losing our key poses here. So I'll shift that to the side a little to see how it should be looking and right now the pink part of the ear is pretty much spot on we have this as well this is really the only one where we're having trouble um, so there is a line on the bottom here and there is one on the inside so i've pretty much positioned it so that this line over here on the outside lines up pretty well with what we have here um, so let's keep that active just so that we can see it and go back into our ear. So let's center on that selection and go over in the new node that we created. And I'm going to trace something that's going to be similar to the line that we see here. I'll make it a little bit longer and we're going to be creating a mask on top of that that will keep everything in the ear active and anything that goes on the outside will be removed. So let's go ahead and grab our pen. We'll go and make sure that we have the same color. So we have the line of the outer ear. All right. Let's make that about the same size. So I believe we had a size two on here. We can just go and manipulate it from there. Let's just verify what size of line we had. If we go over on this ear, so it's a size three. So let's go back here, change our size to three. I want I can make it a consistent line as well by changing the maximum size uh, and the minimum size to be a hundred percent. All right, so let's create our line here. I can even make it a straight line and then just come and curve it using the contour editor. something like that. 
and then we can create a little point here, pressing control, and we'll make that another curvy line like such. I can make this one a little bit longer as well, just in case. We'll be cutting it inside of the shape anyways. All right. So now that we have this one, I'll just save my scene now that I have additional items in here. Um, and I'm going to create a little stroke on that line here just to make sure that we can have a certain shape that is going to contain everything inside of this line. And if we wanted to connect to those points, we can always go and uh, turn on the snap to point here inside of our contour editor. And just readjust it very slightly. And from there, we can go and paint inside of that shape using our cutter or pivot color that we have in here. Now, if you want to split both, you have the choice to use either a color selector or you could use as well the um, line art and color art, which is a good option as well. So I'll just go and cut my colored shape and go and paste it inside of the color art. And from here, we'll split the line and color art into two separate nodes over here. So let's go into our node library, get a line art node. Here we have it. And we're going to get a color art node. Here we go. So uh, now that we have this one, we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to want to see this color art showing up over here. We'll just be using it as a mask. So I want this part of the ear to be cut by the color of the mask. So let's go ahead and get a cutter right away, starting off simple. We want that to be cut, but we actually want the opposite of that to happen, so we'll invert it. So now only this part is visible within my mask. The rest will all be hidden. Um, and I wanted this part to actually be on top, so it would be a good opportunity at the moment to set a Z depth value on there. Remember, you don't want to change the order of the items on the composite because that would uh, mess up your other views as well. So remember, we have to keep that in mind when making changes on here. All right, so I've got my line and I actually want the line to show up only inside of this shape here. So I'm going to go and get another cutter and cut my line by the shape of the ear. And we'll want that line to be visible only inside. So again, another inverted cutter. So now that I can see this one here, let's bring that on top. We'll just set a Z depth value on there. You see that it pops on top of the other one so I can actually bring this one and nudge it forward as well. So now I have this, I just deactivate this, I have this piece here coming on top and I have this mask here that I can actually animate to make the part bigger or smaller. So um, looking at the design that we have, what's probably going to happen as this part kind of takes over to become the entire ear, uh, I may have to um, either create different drawings, but at this point it will probably be easier if I just use this line and set a deformer on it to kind of reshape into this part 
of the ear that we have right here. Um, so we'll see that a little bit more, of course, when we get to creating the quarterback view right now. Let's just focus on um, the one that we have right here. So we've got our quarter front view, but of course now the drawing is only showing on this particular frame. So what happens if I um, extend this view to my first few frames? I just want to make sure that everything is going to work all right. Right now, this shape was actually at the back of my ear for most of the time. So right now you see it kind of pops forward once we get to a certain point. So we may want to reposition it slightly when we get to uh, the quarterback. So it's all about, you know, doing a little bit of back and forth to make sure that everything is going to, um, to look nice once we're done. If it helps, I can bring it to the front a little bit. And um, so basically, if we animate it now, if it had always been at the top, it's just pretty much staying even. Um, so I may want to make slight modifications. I think one thing that would be good would be to add a deformer right away on it, uh, not just on the shape that is showing. So you would want it to be on the full shape uh, of the mask that you created. So usually setting down a display is not a bad idea, especially if you already have systems uh, and items that are masked. You may want to make sure that um, all of this is visible as you create your deformer. So let's go over here and set our display. We'll create a nice envelope around our shape. So I don't think I'm going to need that many points for this one. We can just set them as close as possible to the shape that we have here. Perhaps four will be enough. So you just have to readjust these curves a little bit, making sure again that they're pretty much just around the shape and we're including the mask as well in there in case we need to mask a larger portion of the ear. All right, so let's get rid of that display and come back to our original pose here. So I have a deformer for this line and I also have one for the ear if I needed to make that portion a little bit bigger and include uh, a larger part of the ear that we had right here. So I could actually position that um, and take the entire ear and make it a little bit closer and perhaps modify the deformation as well to include a larger portion of the ear just so it doesn't quite pop up out of nowhere. And I can make the deformation on the line a little bit closer as well so it's practically invisible at this point. And then we can throw that to the back of the ear again so that we don't see it and it should help uh, making it a little bit better over here. So the reason why it's doing that is probably just because we forgot to set down a keyframe on our line here. So let's just make sure that we get slight adjustments here to match what we had over on the other side. And have a transition that's going to be as smooth as possible. So there we go. And now we have a slight adjustment to make when, we, uh, when we're when we going to keyframe those poses, but at least it's going to be closer to the ear a little bit. All right, so that's one of the fixes that we've done. We made sure that the other views were not um, compromised by this fix, which is always a crucial uh, step in creating those. Now uh, we can start looking into creating additional drawings for, let's say, uh, the hand, for example, right here. I do have uh, a hand that's a little bit different, so another hand position 
uh, will be required over here. All right, so we can move on then to the next video where I'll show you guys how to create those additional drawings without disrupting the rest of the rig. See you guys there.